the other. That gets back to what we said earlier, which is a key thing. The opposite of love, according to John Paul II, what's the opposite of loving in the other person? Nope. 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 To use the other person. The opposite of love is to use. To use it for me. Brad Pitt says at the end, I know what I want and I'm going to have it. I'm using the other person for myself. It's about what I want. Okay? Exactly. You, you, have to you, you, pass, years you, pass, you pass through the romantic love stage, first of all. Okay, and that can go, that's, you know, that, that lasts for a while. And then even into marriage, usually, there's a bit of a disillusionment. And that's not, again, we're, yes, like you say, it's not to say that that's bad. That if you're really a good person, you would, there is no way around the fact that you are attracted to who you are attracted to in the moment, right? Um, and we're going to talk more about that later. So it's not to say, well, gosh, I've got to avoid romantic love. I've got to avoid... No, you can't. So the, 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 the period in between is when you, when you come to the edge where romantic love, you suddenly realize that that wears off, and it will wear off in a hurry. Whenever you start to doubt and, and have concerns about the other person, it seems to snowball a lot of times. And people all of a sudden, husbands and wives are like, asking themselves a year and a half in, is this marriage going to last? It will happen very quickly, a year and a half to two years, okay? And um, so when that happens, then there, what happens in, until the other person realize, until both people realize that authentic love is what, what really I should be striving for, what, the, the transition period is called a mess. <laughs> it's called marriage counseling, <laughs> Okay, is exactly what it's called. It's called going and talking to a priest or you going and talking to your mom and dad and saying, Mom and Dad, I'm thinking about getting a divorce or I, I can't stand this other person. He's not who I married. She's not who I married. It's, it's, it's total upheaval. Yes, yes. And so knowing, knowing that Rome, if you both know, you and your husband know going into your marriage that at one point we're gonna, romantic love is going to not continue to sustain us, that helps definitely. That helps because then that's why we're doing this. So that hopefully, ideally, when you all get married or do whatever, you, you marry the church or whatever your vocation is, when you get to that end of romantic love, you're not having a complete and emo utter emotional breakdown. It will still be hard. And you know that. Okay, hopefully you know that. It will still be difficult, but at least you're not thinking, I don't love the other person. No, false. Romantic love wore off. And now it's time to fire up authentic, the authentic love engines. If you're both aware of that, you're not freaking out. It's tough. It's tough. It's hard. But you're not freaking out. Okay, the people, but so many people in our society today, I think, end up walking away from their marriage because they think, "I don't love them anymore." No, you're just not romantically. It's like a it's get worse. Lovely, <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, some very good things here to introduce the idea of true love. He says, he says, let the other person know who you are. And let the chips fall where they may. I love that. A quick story for me from college about romantic love. Okay? I, um, one night, every night before a football game in college, we had to go and do something as a team so that we wouldn't get all arrested. Okay? The coach didn't trust the football team by themselves. All right? Hanover. Hanover College. I did. I just wanted to sucker you guys in. No. Um, so one night, we went, as the football team, we went to watch the volleyball team play. 
the Hanover volleyball team. Now, I had never seen the Hanover volleyball team. Yes? Have you told this story, or is it a story in your book? It's in my book as well. Okay, because I read it, and I was oh. like, deja vu, did you say it? Did I Okay, it's, yes. I'm sorry, I'm Rude. 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 A little bit. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. We're, okay. We're happy. We're happy. Uh, so I walk in. Volleyball match, right? Never seen Hanover play because they were literally like the worst team in the country. Okay, they had lost. I don't think they had won that year. Uh, so I'd never, I'd never gone to see them. Plus, I was busy with my own sport. Okay. Well, I walked in, and there was the most beautiful woman I've ever seen playing for Hanover. And I, and I turned to my roommate, and I was like, I'm going to meet her. Like, I have to meet her. Like, it's in the stars. Like, I'm going to... <laughs> It was like, I didn't say stars, but it was just like, I knew instantly. I'm like, I'm in love, right? And um, I, uh, it was the church, very nice. <laughs> the church, <laughs> the, um, very good. Exactly. So, so. Okay, we done now? Yeah, seriously, the bishop's going to, you're in trouble now. Hurting my feelings. So, anyway, um, I decided that over the next couple, I was like, I have to meet her. And so I looked for this opportunity to do that, right? And um, I practiced in the mirror for like two weeks, right? Well, I'm t hey, I'm, I'm not ashamed, okay? So I, uh, so I practiced in the mirror for like two weeks what I was going to say, um, you know, and I looked for the perfect opportunity, and then I found out that my friends, uh, th their fraternity was having a Halloween party, and that was like a week away, so I was like, that's the time, I'm going to do that then. So I had all these other friends who were girls, and they were like helping me and uh, giving me advice, and I had like this, this, this costume that I decided, that I thought of in my head, which was going to be... Um, that I was going to dress up as a doctor with a stethoscope and everything, and then my name tag was Dr. Love. <laughs> yeah. It was good. It was good. I was pretty proud of that. I practiced a lot. And um, before or after what? Oh, my gosh. This was after KISS. I was in college in, like, 2001, man. Come on. Got me some slack. I wasn't into college in the 70s. Yeah. So anyway, so anyway, so I practiced all this stuff, you know, and I finally met her, and I was just terrified, nervous, right, Aww. sweaty palms, everything, and, uh, but we ended up dating for a while. Um, the, the rest of the story, we'll, we'll get into some other time, but the whole point of that was my, every, uh, there was no way that I was going to go, t when I first met her, there was no way that I was going to say who I really was. You know, like, there was, I had to create this entire persona like get up the energy and like pretend to be like funny guy, Dr. Love, ha, ah, see I'm cool. Um, I practiced so that I wouldn't like, there was, there's no way, and we all do that, I think, to some extent. When we first, if we see somebody, what's that? Because I was, if, if, if I am, why would, why do people not want to be themselves in that situation? If you get rejected, it's you that's getting rejected. However, if, I'm, if I put on a persona of some kind and I get rejected, then it's that that's getting rejected. Not so I can walk away and say, well, she didn't like my character. You know what I mean? No, I didn't, I didn't think through that in the moment. You, hopefully, you get to the point where you can be yourself. And, and, and that's the whole point. The, um, on the front of your handout, one last thing you need to write down. There's a Bible verse, John 15, 13, I think it is. I, wrote, I, I think I left a blank spot for you on the very front. Okay? John 15, 13. No greater love is there than this. No greater love is there than this. No greater love is there than this. To lay down one's life. There is no greater love than this. To lay down one's life for one's friend. There is no greater love than this, than to lay down one's life 
for one's friend. If we stay in the idea of love being about me, being about what I need, being about what people need to give me, I'm not really experiencing authentic love. It's when I would give my life for the other, that's when I can start to experience authentic love. No homework tonight, class again tomorrow, yay. yay. Get fired up. You, you're not going to do it. It, it, the only thing you need to have, the only time you need to have a sign, the only is if you are not going to do it. So,